This is the Rokat Burst Pro Air, and it's honestly been one of the most underrated gaming mice that I've had the chance to play with so far. When it was originally sent out to me, I wasn't expecting to like it all that much, but after my first few games, it already started growing on me. At 100 bucks, I think it's a solid option for more casual players, but in my opinion, it doesn't quite hit the mark if you're a very competitive gamer. That said, it's definitely been able to find a spot in my setup, so let's get into why that is. Starting with the design, it's available in a white or black color, which both look super clean. Where it sticks out the most is the back with the honeycomb cutouts that are lit up by the RGB lighting, then have a plastic shell over top. This makes the lighting effects look super good on the mouse itself, but also the mouse pad because it'll bleed through, giving off this almost underglow type of effect. It has a symmetrical shape with a flatter body, pretty similar to both the Viper and Superlight, which I think makes it a pretty safe pick for almost any grip style. Measuring it up, it's 120mm long, 58mm wide, and 38mm tall. I found it to be most comfortable for me using a sort of hybrid claw and fingertip grip, and have had no issues playing with it for several hours at a time. I'd say it's one of the most comfortable mice I've used actually so far, and this has a lot to do with the hexagonal texture we have on both the sides. It's very grippy, but also just feels nice to rest your fingers on, and it reminds me a bit of the texture that the Viper's Plastic has. It's a lightweight mouse coming in at 81 grams on my scale, but that is a lot heavier compared to the other gaming mice I own, and is part of the reason that I was a bit skeptical before trying it out. If you're looking at a lot of comparisons, you may think the lighter the mouse the better, but in day to day use, a 10 or even 20 gram difference doesn't actually affect your overall experience. As someone who's made several much lighter mice, the difference was noticeable when I first switched to it, but after those first couple sessions, I was already used to it, and fine with how it felt. I've even found that I'm more precise with my shots when using a heavier mouse, but when flicking around it is a little easier to use a lighter one. The mouse is built very well, and the weight adds to the solid feeling it has. The plastic on the back and side feels sturdy, but the mouse buttons have been a spot that I've been really disappointed in. They feel super slippery and just cheaply made. Clicking on them, the optical switches lack the tactile feedback that I would expect at this price point, they have a very hollow feel and aren't satisfying to press at all. Though the positives with them is that there should be no double clicking issues, and there's basically no pre or post travel. I'll give you guys a quick sound test so you can have an idea as to what they're like. The side buttons make this mouse more catered towards right-handed gamers with there only being two with the left side. Unlike the mouse switches, these buttons actually have a nice tactile feel to them and are satisfying to press. They protrude out a good bit, making them easy to press, but don't cause any issues with accidental clicks. Looking over to the scroll wheel, it's pretty impressive. The scroll itself is quite smooth and doesn't make much noise. The rubber coating is comfortable to rest your finger on, and the wheel feels well built. Pressing on it, it doesn't make a lot of noise and feels solid. Underneath the scroll wheel is the DPI button that you can use to cycle between different sensitivity stages. I honestly don't care that much myself, but I do know that a lot of people prefer having it up here so that you don't need to lift up the mouse in order to switch between stages. What is missing though is any sort of LED indicator to signify which stage you're actually on. The sensor is capable of tracking it up to a 19,000 DPI, which makes for a very responsive feel. It has a max pulling rate of 1000 Hz, so on a high refresh rate monitor playing competitive games, it'll feel slick. Good to know as well is that this is an NVIDIA Reflex supported mouse. This is a technology on GeForce GPUs that helps to reduce your input lag, which can be beneficial if you're playing competitive titles. Right now, there's still only a relatively small list of supported games, but it will continue to grow in the future. It actually doesn't really tax your system at all to use, so in games like Siege and Valorant that do support it, there's no downside to enabling it. The stock PTFE feet are actually pretty good and makes for a smooth glide across my mousepad. The included USB-C to A cable charges the mouse, but also can be used to play wired if that's something you want to do. It's made of a nice material that's lightweight, so it won't be getting in the way. Though most likely you'll just be playing wireless, and you can do that in one of two ways, either with the 2.4 GHz dongle or over Bluetooth. The power switch at the bottom allows you to quickly turn off the mouse or change which wireless connection it's using, but I recommend you stick to just using the receiver if possible. This ensures you're having the most consistent connection, and while Bluetooth can be a little more convenient at times, to me it feels significantly worse. Even with the mouse being right next to the PC, it's a lot laggier. Whenever you're not playing and don't want to leave the receiver plugged in, there is luckily a slot at the bottom that you can store it. The lighting on the mouse is one of its coolest features in my opinion. There are zones underneath the plastic at the back and the mouse buttons, on the scroll wheel, and finally at the bottom of the mouse. Especially here on the white model, it has a very unique look to it that stands out from my other mice. Though your hand will cover it during use, so it might not be all that practical. The battery life will take a hit with the lighting effects enabled, but even then it's still been very impressive. It's rated for a max of 100 hours, and a 10 minute charge can provide you with 5 hours of playtime. 
To configure the lighting effects along with the performance settings, you'll need to download Rocat Swarm. Using it though is a huge pain in the ass as the interface is ugly as hell and confusing to navigate. The app itself feels super sluggish and it can take ages to save settings on the mouse, sometimes requiring as much as a full system restart to work properly. But putting that all aside, the Burst Pro Air is overall a really good option for casual players. I've been very impressed with it and enjoyed using it in my gaming setup. At its $100 price tag, what's really holding it back is the weight and mouse switches. Coming in at 81 grams, it's significantly heavier than a lot of its competition and is noticeable as someone who's made lighter mice, though if you've only ever used a heavier mouse, it'll still feel very light. Clicking on the mouse buttons doesn't provide any tactile feedback and makes pressing on them much less satisfying than I'd want for a mouse I'm spending hours playing with every week. The plastic on the buttons feels cheap and makes the press itself feel worse. But what I think this mouse does really well is have unique lighting while still maintaining great battery life. The rubber sides are extremely comfortable and with its symmetrical shape I can grip the mouse in a way that gives me a lot of control in game. The stock feet as well are solid and glide well on my mouse pad. If you're not crazy competitive and are just looking for a good gaming mouse at 100 bucks, this is one definitely worth considering. That's said i've been cole and i appreciate you all for watching i'll catch you in the next one but till then take care